the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray that you speak to us this morning with clarity and understanding, Jehovah. And Lord, help us to take the appropriate actions in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is good and all the time and that is his nature. We have been focusing on God's call last week, this week. We are looking at God's call to service. So whether you are serving in church or in marketplace, it's important for us to know that we have been called by God. We live in a world where many of us are dissatisfied with what they do. And we don't even understand the reason why, but every time we think of waking up in the morning, it is such a challenge to us, it's such a torturous exercise to us because we don't like what we are going to do. We don't like where we are going to serve. And uh, it has been a source of depression to many and frustration you may have titles and you are still not satisfied. You may have the money, you are still not satisfied. Then it means that there is something that is not right. In this world that we live in and everybody is trying to be something. And we are told that you can be all what you want to be. I submit to us, no, you can be all what you want to be. But you can be all what God wants you to be. Hello? And that is why we are focusing on God's call for service. To us, we need to hear and we need to listen so that we can understand what the Lord is saying in as far as the assignment is concerned. I do want to acknowledge that we live in a world that is full of noises and that's why sometimes we are not able to listen when God is talking to us. There are noises everywhere. Even the devil is making noises so that we cannot hear God. And sometimes, and most of the times, we get confused. So today we want to journey together as we look at the calling of God in the life of uh, Simon Peter and in the life of Samuel. We start with the life of Samuel. Samuel was a son given to God to Anna at her old age because she didn't have children. And if you read First Samuel in chapter 1, she went out and cried to God and asked God to honor her by giving her a son. And she prayed before God that she was going to give the son back to the Lord. And that's exactly what she did when she weaned the boy. She took him to the temple. And as she submitted and gave him to the temple, you can read that in the first Samuel chapter 1 verse 21 or they're going to 24. After he was weaned, he was taken to the temple and left there left him there with the priest who was serving the temple and his name was Eli. A little child was given to God at that age because Hannah honored the promise that she made or the pledge that she made. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Today as we pray, we'll also honor God with the pledges we have pledged. Hello? It is good to honor God. Irrespective of how challenging it is, honor God. And so this boy was left there at Goshi. He grew up in the temple. And as a young man, one time in chapter 3 now, we see he was called by God, the starting of Samuel's prophetic ministry. He was called by God four times. And the first time, as usual, he was called and he ran to the priest through Eli and said, here I am. And Eli said, you know, I didn't call you. So he went back to sleep. Second time, third time. The fourth time he went to Eli again 
And early realized, no, this is something else that is happening. The Lord is calling Samuel. And early told Samuel, verse 9, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Verse 10, the Lord came and stood there calling us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. My brothers and my sisters, the call on, of God comes to us as we see in the book of Samuel specifically for a given time. And there is no confusion. God called Samuel by name. Samuel, Samuel. I submit to you that the Lord knows you and knows us by name. He will not because sometimes we act like God is confused with the names. There are many times that people challenge me at the door and ask me their names. And I get quite confused. I, I, I confess. But I'm human. Hello? But God is not human. He cannot mistake your name with the other person. He knows us by name right before the creation. And so this call that we are talking about, the call of God on our lives for service, he calls us specifically by name and gives a specific assignment. Why? Because everybody was created by God for a purpose. And it is important for us Christians to ask God, what is my purpose? And when we serve within the purpose that God created us for, we'll be satisfied. No matter how hard that will be. Let me tell you, in this prophetic ministry of Samuel, the first assignment that God gave him was to go tell the high priest early that himself and his household would be destroyed because of the sin that was in his house. And himself, he didn't do anything to correct his sons. And so the Lord decided there is no forgiveness in the house of, of uh, Eli. I will destroy them. That was a very difficult assignment, considering Eli was the one who raised Samuel. And now Samuel is going to face him and tell him, you know what? God has said, I will, or he will destroy you. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the assignments that God gave us are not what we think or expect. They are very, very challenging. Like the way Samuel was called and his first assignment as a young man was to give judgment to the very person who brought him up. I submit to us as God gives us the assignment, he gives us the ability and the grace to do the assignment. So when God calls you, it doesn't add at calling. God calls and equips for service. And so we see Samuel started here, and he grew up to be a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. He is the one who was sent to go and tell Samuel that Saul, that God has rejected Saul as the leader, as the king of Israel. And again, he went there and anointed David as the king. What am I saying? As difficult as the assignment may be, the Lord will be there with you. The Lord is there for me, and therefore there is no need to fear. What we need to do is to listen to God and hear clearly what the Lord is instructing us. And not only do we want to hear the instructions, it is important for us to follow the instructions that God is giving us. I know. Many people ask, how does God speak? There are times that God speaks audibly. Like the way I'm speaking. The way he called Samuel. There are times that the Lord will speak through his word. A 
as we interact with the word of God. And that is why we need to have a relationship with the Lord. Because unless we have a relationship with the Lord, it becomes very difficult to identify the voice of God. It is important. It is important. So we read and interact with the word of God. Number three, God speaks to us when we are in prayer. As we set time to pray and go and sit somewhere or go somewhere in a quiet place and just talk to God, he will reveal himself to us through the help of the Holy Spirit. And he will give us the message that he wants to give us so if we can hear God through prayer. And number four, we can hear God through the prophetic voice. There are those prophets that God has raised. Leave alone the first one, the first prophet. The others that are genuine truthful that God has raised. And sometimes we hear what God is saying about our lives and the assignments that God has for us. We hear from the prophetic voice that comes to us as it came to early, as it came to Samuel. But my brothers and my sisters, that's not the end of the matter, hearing the voice of God. It is so sad that it's one thing to hear, it is one thing to act on what the Lord is saying. And it is one thing to start the journey well of the assignment that God has given unto us. But the most important thing is to finish well. Look at Moses was called by God. And he talked about his stammers and does all of this. But Moses did not finish well. By the end of the day, no one knows where the grave of Moses is, but died somewhere and God buried him because he disobeyed God. At the end of his journey, he disobeyed God. Look at Eli who was called as a high priest. And somewhere along the way, he compromised himself. And by the end of the day, he died together with his entire family. Following through is key on the assignment and on the call that God has called us. We see now somebody else who was called the Gospel of John and chapter, Gospel of John and chapter 21. Because somebody can say it, the calling was only in the Old Testament. No, it cuts across as God who calls. Now here comes Simon Peter, who was being called and challenged by Jesus. And this is what it says. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you? Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. The third time he was called again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hard. He got angry. But you can see the emphasis of the call. God confirming the call over and over again in his life. And many of us, we act like Simon Peter. I mean, it's like, what do you want? I am here. Don't you know I love you? I'm sold out to do your work. And again, Jesus said, feed my lambs. My brothers and my sisters, it is important for us who are called Christians to know the call that God has called us in our lives. It is important that we are able to distinguish the voice of God and have a discerning spirit because the callers are many. But the question is this, which voice are you listening to? 
A lot of times people ask this question, how can I be able to identify the voice of God? How will I know that it is God who has called me? I want to give us just a few tips on that. Number one, you will know that it is God calling you when it doesn't contradict the scripture. The call does not contradict the scripture. It is in line with the word of God. And you can confirm it in the word of God because everything else will pass away, but the word of God, which is the truth, will stand the test of time. And so it is critical for us if you want to know that it is God speaking to you. Ask the Spirit to reveal it in the scripture. And you'll see it, you'll see the instructions in the scripture. If the assignment contradicts the word of God, then you know that is not from God. That is as simple as that. And so the next thing that you need to check, number two, the call must be confirmed by other people, especially in the family of believers. Those people who know the word of God, they need to confirm the call of God on your life. That which God has spoken must be confirmed in the witness of two and three. And it is important for you to test it. And that's why you need people in the body of believers who know the word of God, that somebody can give reference back to the word of God. You confirm Number three, not only do you need to make sure that it doesn't contradict the scripture, not only do you need to make sure that it's confirmed by two or three believers, early confirmed the call of God on Samuel's life. So number three, you need to make sure that call glorifies God. That the assignment that God is calling and giving you to do, it will glorify God, not you. So whatever it is that God is calling us to do, it is for God's glory. Look at the assignment that uh, was given to Samuel. It was so difficult. But by the end of the day, it was to bring honor and glory unto God. Look at the assignment that was given to Peter. It wasn't, Peter was not the focus. It was to glorify God. Feed my sheep. Take care of them. So that assignment and that call that God is giving you or calling you, it's not about you, it's about glorifying God. That's how you test and know this is from God. It is for the glory of God. As we ask, how can we be able to identify the voice of God? And number four, it is always important for us to know that when God calls us specifically, he is calling us from self to selfless. That is an assignment that we are going to totally depend on God. This assignment that Samuel was given to go to early, was given to identify the leader of Israel. It's not an assignment that he could do alone. And that is why you find when he went to the house of Jesse to identify a king in the house of Jesse. As a human being, he looked at these big-bodied men and decided they look like they are the ones whom God has called to be kings of Israel. And quickly God corrected him and said, Samuel, men look at the outside and I, the Lord, look at the inside. And so I reject all of those. There is still somebody else. And that's how David was identified to be king as a shepherd boy. And so we need to know that we need to have a spirit of humility, selflessness, sacrifice, not only for ourselves, but we also sacrifice for those others. 
And when we are called, we are called into new life. There is transformation that takes place in love for God and for our neighbors. The Bible reminds us that in the book of Ephesians and chapter 4 and verse 2, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love, and make every effort to keep the unity of the body. My brothers and my sisters, this call that God is calling us is called to humility. If you find that you are thinking that God has called you and is full of pride, it is me, 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 and everything is me focused. Please quickly know that assignment is demonic because the devil is the one who is selfish. But God is calling us from self to selfless. And therefore, he's calling us to be humble, completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another. Bearing with one another in love. And so today as we come together, we need to be able to identify which voice are we listening to. And we test the voice by looking at these things. The other issue, number five, is to remind ourselves, because God is the one who created us, he gave us gifts. And we have read that in the book of Ephesians and chapter four. He has given us gifts, different gifts to edify the body of Christ. And so for us, as these gifts are given, the unique gift, when God calls us, he calls us within the areas of giftings that God has given unto us. There is no confusion. But many of us, we are getting lost because we want to copy the other person. You can be Joyce, I cannot be you. I'm made and I've been given this gift and you have been given another gift maybe to do business. And you are a good business person. But for me, as far as business is concerned, mine is to preach the word of the word of God. So you can be me and I can be you. But the Lord will call you in the area of your gifting. But my brothers and my sisters, we need to be conscious that it is God who has called us and given us the assignment and therefore we are accountable to God. And so whatever it is that we need to do, we do it as for the Lord, we need to do it in integrity. We need to do it unreservingly. We need to do it for the glory of God and edification of the body of Christ. So today the question continues. And the Lord is asking us this day. And I pray as we leave the church today the Spirit of God will reveal to you. What are you listening to? And who are you listening to? May the good Lord reveal himself to you. As he revealed himself to Moses, as he called, to Jeremiah, as he called, to Samuel, as he called, to Paul, as he called, to Peter, as he called, this day, I pray that the Lord will reveal himself to you. And all of us ultimately will be serving the purpose of God in this life that God has given unto us. And hence, we'll be satisfied, complimenting one another. We'll be joyful, we'll be transformed. But all of it it's not for our own benefit, but for the glory of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.